Hey y'all, I'm Brendan, and I'm here to give the technical pitch for the Sense NC team. We came here all the way from Raleigh, North Carolina in the United States, so it's been a long trip. But uh, it's really nice to see you all, and I'm glad to be here. So, to the device. Um, the device that we use is a sandwich-based immunoassay. We're using fluorescence as the detection principle. Um, as you can see, our, our motto is simple sample to rapid results. The, the cool thing about the device is that we have low power requirements, uh, high detection, and also we have a lot of flexibility built into our device. We use a cartridge concept, so we're able to um, multiplex the device eventually to run a full panel of heart health assays on the same disk. In terms of molecular recognition, I mentioned fluorescence. The way we conjugated the detector antibodies to the latex beads, which are the things that fluoresce in our device, was through reductive amination. And as you can see, this gives us a regioselective in terms of a conjugation approach. So it always binds to the same spot and maintains the functionality of the antibody. So you can see it binds to the FC region of the antibody because of the glycosylation there. So we bind to it through the sugars. So that's really great in terms of sensor detection. Uh, we don't have to worry about uh, kaput antibodies in our system. So again, when I mentioned the sandwich assay, this is kind of a rundown of how it works. We conjugate the fluorescent detector molecule to the NT pro BNP. This is captured by our capture antibody, which is immobilized in our device. On the right side, you can see uh, how we selected our antibodies. We used uh, BLI kinetic assay, and so basically we modified the antibodies in a similar way to which they would be modified in the actual device, and we performed a binding study on that. And so we found the antibodies that were most, had the most affinity for BNP in that situation. So from that, we, we selected the detection antibody as 29D12, and the capture antibody as uh, antibody 15C4. So this is the disk I was telling you about. This part's really cool. It consists of four total microfluidic channels. Within each channel are four different chambers. The loading chamber, which is marked as a one on here. This is where we would load the sample in. In the well number two, we have the, we have, uh, the, the detection antibodies that are there and they're waiting to complex with the analyte in the sample. And then on to well number three, they'll meet with the capture analyte and be bound there. So the fourth well will be a control to make sure that the test fluid ran all the way through the device. And in the fifth, the fifth marked well is a waste well. So that catches all of the integrated wash buffer that's loaded in this uh, kind of speech bubble thing here to the side. And based on that, once it's all flown through, the control strip lights up and the sample is measured there in well number three. The disk itself, you can see here from the top, the red wells contain the integrated wash buffer, and in the green wells is where we would load the sample in. The disk itself is constructed of various materials you can see broken down there. We have two light masking things on the top and bottom, and uh, the channels are etched into the acrylic in, in there that you can see. So the rest of the layers are to make sure that the microfluidic channel is sealed and that the flow proceeds along the channels and not outwards through the device. In terms of detection, so once we have everything in the right well and the microfluidic channels have flown, how do we determine what amount of BNP is there? We use a light emitting, emitting diode to shoot a light at the latex beads. Those beads are then excited and that light is passed through a filter. The filter will filter out the excitation light that we used and allow through only the light coming from the fluorescent molecules. This light is received by the photodiode, which translates that signal to the volt, to the voltmeter. Uh, on the side, you can see our spectrum analysis. And then finally, on the final back end, the device itself will analyze the sample and give a response in concentration. We bin these responses into a high risk, a medium risk, and a low risk. So all of this is built into the device. There's no need to send the results off to a professional. It's displayed so that a user can use it and see the results instantly. I'm from SenseNC, and I'd like to thank ASSIST, the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering, and also the Chemical and Biomolecular Engineering Department at NC State. And uh, thank you again to Census for having us out here. We really appreciate it. I'll take any questions now. So are there any questions?
You said about the BLI uh, assay to actually uh, select the uh, antibodies. Can you tell a little bit more how that uh, perform, how, how that works? Um, okay, so for that we used a strept avidin uh, tipped sensor. We conjugated a biotin. We conjugated biotin in the same manner that I was talking about earlier to the FC region of the antibody. And then we performed an assay there with those two components. So we were modifying in a similar way through a similar group. And we then tested that. So once we conjugated to the, t to the strep avidin tip, we measured the response of the, the tip to the introduction of BMP into the system. So it produced a binding curve for us that showed us like the, the light scatter based on when the molecules bound to the thing, to the uh, tip antibody construct that we made. Yeah. Any more questions? Yeah. Uh, how does the control chamber work? Uh, you're asking me a hard question because I'm the chemist person in the group, but the control chip, uh, can you clarify really quick what you mean by the control, control chip? Um, yeah, well, you said that there were four ch chambers, so, and then there was the last one, the fourth one was oh, control. Okay. Yeah. So the control strip would be conjugated to a FITC molecule. So we would have, say, uh, a mouse anti-sheep antibody bound in, this, in that well. And we would also be flowing with the sample in the integrated wash buffer. Contains, uh, if it's mouse anti-sheep, sheep antibodies conjugated to the FITC molecule. And so we have a separate photodiode that is excited and red at that, at that point too. So we can determine between a failed run and a blank sample. So if someone has no BNP or if it's a blank sample, we could see, oh, the control well still shows up, if that makes sense. OK, cool. OK, any more questions? OK, then I would like to, then I would like to thank you <laughs> for your nice pitch.